Uh, I suppose we should talk about that black cloud that uh, the CMO referred to, Dr Tony Holohan, the Indian variant. What do we know from the science? Yeah, that's right, about the black cloud. But um, oh, over the weekend, a huge amount of, of extra information has come out on this one. Obviously, the UK are examining, examining it very, very closely. You know, we know a lot about it, actually. It's got 13 mutations. So it is different, obviously, to the other ones, hence it's given a, the number B1617.2. Um, and, and it's noted it's more transmissible. So maybe 50% more than the B1171 which was the last variant that came along but really Pat th- th- there's good news anyway I mean the antibodies against the older one still work against this one in a sense and nobody has developed severe disease basically from this Indian variant if they've been vaccinated with the previous one so but it's, it's day, the data keeps coming all the time on this one so it's interesting isn't it yet another variant has cropped up I guess now, the question of the vaccines which are used in the UK, and they have rather more cases of the Indian variant than we have, um, they uh, have had their vaccination programme dominated by AstraZeneca and Pfizer. What do we know about those jabs in protecting people against this new variant? Yeah, Pfizer is 88% effective, they're saying, after the second jab. I mean, they've done an interesting study there, like a real world study, I guess. So one jab does give some protection, as we know, but the second jab, it really gave a high level of protection against the Indian variant. AstraZeneca slightly less, it was 60%. But then there was a wider gap between the doses and some of the people wouldn't have been fully vaccinated, if you know what I mean. So they, they think they'll be equivalent. They'll both be able to protect at a very high level. And then Pfizer themselves released a statement saying in their hands that their vaccine is 70 to 75% effective against this new variant. And they tested 30 other variants, if you can believe it. And this is in a lab setting now. And again, the mm-hmm. Pfizer vaccine was efficacious against all the variants. So the, the view at the moment is the vaccine Vaccines, you may catch the, the virus if it's if it's a new variant, but it won't progress into severe disease. And of course, that's the most important thing, because as I always say, we, we don't invent vaccines to stop you getting sniffles. We invent them to stop you getting severe disease. And the signs are good that many of these variants then, vac- the old va- vaccines, if you will, should give some protection against severe disease. Is there any argument for shortening the gap between the first and second dose of AstraZeneca? If you remember in the UK, uh, four weeks was the origin, uh, original advice from uh, AstraZeneca themselves. And then it um, expanded to 12 weeks. They figured it was better to leave more time to elapse. And then 16 weeks. And I think they also stretched the gap in Pfizer. So are they likely to reverse that uh, strategy? They will have lots of supply. I mean, the point is, um, immunologically, you can leave it longer. It'll still work work, you know, but you might as well get the two jabs done, you know, in, in a relatively quick time, I suppose, is one idea here. Four, six, eight, twelve weeks, they're all good gaps, really, you know. There is some evidence if even longer, it might work better, but the, these differences are quite small, really, you know. And remember, Pat, the evidence is the first dose is good anyway. You will get a good response from the first jab. The second one reinforces that as the idea. So you might as well get the second one in, is, is one line of reasoning. Especially if, if the newer variants, you need the second jab to give you really strong protection against the new variant, you might as well get the second job job at a shorter interval between the two.